Many cities were feeling the impact of industrialization in terms of factory migrations to cities and the influx of thousands of European immigrants and rural American immigrants. The industrial cities were focused at the core, especially for various business ventures, commerce and trade, retailing, hotel accommodations, and cultural activities. The separation between work and residence for the middle and upper classes were much more profound than in the walking city, as these groups increasingly fled the central cities for the suburbs. The working classes, by contrast, remained near the core and close to industrial workplaces since they had little to no access to public transportation and had to live by the clock or lose their jobs. By the 1880s, low-fare electric streetcars replaced the slower and less reliable horse cars, offering public transportation to a growing ridership. Streetcars, however, still relied on light rail tracks radiating out from the central business districts into surrounding areas and newly forming suburbs. Urban development thus congregated close to the streetcar lines. New York City, a crowded area, provided distinct economic opportunities to contractors who built buildings for the Tweed administration. Those with limited luck, on the other hand, such as immigrants, found economic success as entrepreneurs. The spread of opportunity ultimately led to increased prosperity, but it would eventually contribute to overcrowding of the city. The faults in society seemed to come forth heavily in the progressive movement of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. In New York, one of the biggest events to set the progressive movement into full speed was the fire of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory. Due to improper safety precautions, about 150 workers died in the fire that took place within the building, either jumping from the building or suffering under the intense pain of being burned alive. Because of this, new standards were created within workspaces. Fire exits and fire escapes now became regulation within buildings. Doors always open outwards. No doors are to be locked during working hours. Sprinklers are to be installed if the building has 25 or more people working above ground. And fire drills are mandatory. Seth Lowe, at one time the mayor of New York, used his power during the progressive movement to create new political and social reforms. Some of these included working with Rapid Transit Board to create the first subway, assisting various schools with funding, and attacking political machines. The class distinction occurred as the rich began to expand away from the city. And where the rich go, revenue follows, causing areas of the city to degrade due to poor maintenance. Another cause for distinction was discrimination towards immigrants, and the animosity would lead to an increased crime rate. You see, it takes a woman during the 1880s to the 1920s, women could become part of the working class. They could do this by being a, a clerical worker, which is like a secretary or a filer. These would be considered unskilled workers. Or they could be part of the textile mill industry and do anything with making clothing or anything like that. Another role of woman in this time period could be a suffragette. A suffragette is a woman involved in the women's suffrage movement, trying to get the right to vote and equal pay for women. For the working class, women would become more independent because women now have their own salaries. This led into the 1920s because women from World War I now have the mindset that they don't need a man. A lot of women had respiratory issues because of the fibers in the surrounding air of the textile mills. The suffragettes from being in the women's suffrage movement. They say home is where your heart is. However, the word home seemed to stretch for some of the working class. Contributing factors to such conditions include low wages, competition with immigrants, and the migration of the rich away from the city. As a result, the working class families experience various problems, from dealing with unsanitary conditions to hatred towards immigrants. In 1872, the main New York Democratic boss, William N. Tweed, was discovered to be the head of a corrupted political machine within New York, known as Tammany Hall. 
Boss tweeted at Tammany Hall and discreetly shaved about $200 million off of the New York City Treasury for uh, personal gain. Boss tweet had his own courthouse constructed, which cost the city of New York about $13 million. Because Tweed had so much power and money, he also had the ability to control the mayor of New York and pretty much do whatever he wanted. Finally, the press, along with some revenge-seeking city officials, were able to expose Tweed and his machine for their corrupt dealings. Attempts to cure the corruption of New York after Boss Tweed left included beautification campaigns, city planning, rationalization of city government, and increases in the city services. Immigrants moved into the poorer sections of the major cities and often into neighborhoods abandoned by upperly mobile immigrant groups. Seeking familiar surroundings, they tended to live and work with people from the native country. Although their children attended public school and quickly learned English, immigrant parents continued to use their native tongue, transplanting a little bit of the old world into the new. Immigrant neighborhoods with nicknames like Little Italy, Little Bohemia, or Chinatown or were rich with old world languages, from newspapers and signs to voices heard on the streets. These neighborhoods were terribly overcrowded, with upwards of 4,000 people housed on a single block. Such overcrowding contributed to poverty, crime, and disease. Native born Americans were troubled by the influx of foreigners. Moreover, new immigrants were often portrayed as dangerous radicals or threats to the jobs of American workers. Given these attitudes towards foreigners, it was no surprise that calls for restrictions on immigration began to sound. In 1882, Congress denied convicts, paupers, and the mentally ill the right to enter the United States. The Chinese Exclusion Act, passed in 1882, suspended immigration from China for 10 years. It was extended for another decade in 1892 and was made permanent in 1902. The law was not repealed until 1943. Have you seen the well-to-do Up and down Park Avenue On that famous thoroughfare In New York City, many architectural styles could be seen. One could be in the Herman Banger Mansion by the architect Frank Freeman, located in Brooklyn, New York. This, was, this project was completed in 1889. The design is Richardsonian Romanesque. The Richardsonian Romanesque style can be summed up in one word, heavy. Romanesque buildings are fortress-like, short with imposing solid walls. Other important elements of the style include short circular towers with conical roofs, squat chimneys, asymmetry, contrasting stone color around openings, deep windows, and large rough stone walls. Another structure could be seen within the Bronx Zoo by the architectural firm Heinz & Lafarge, located in the Southern Bronx Park, completed in 1897. The design is the Beaux-Arts style. The Beaux-Arts style is characterized by the large scale of its decorative features and the richness of its detail, all derived from a classic architectural vocabulary of columns, pediments, balustrades, statuary, medallions, and garlands. Typically, buildings have a tight, smooth surface broken by the projections of the decorative features at openings and at the building roof. These structures could, could include the Elephant House, constructed in 1905, the Primate House, constructed in 1902, the large bird house constructed in 1905 and the main entrance of the zoo which has a cathedral-like style.